All right, so I am here with my good friend, Jessica Fjalkovich. She's the founder of The Exit Factor, um, and she's the foremost expert when it comes to selling your business. So I wanted to have a quick chat with her because as you're going through this process of creating your vision and you're creating your vision so that we can create marketing to make that vision real, a big part of your vision is actually thinking about your exit strategy. And it's been my experience that most entrepreneurs um, wait far too long to think about their exit strategy. So I was excited when Jessica uh, committed a little bit of time for us today to share her expertise. Um, but she's also the founder of one of America's fastest growing and largest business brokerages. So Jessica, welcome. This is uh, my little tribe for the marketing plan formula. Oh, thanks, Russell. Thanks for having me. And hello to you all that are watching out there. So where everyone's at, just to kind of bring you up to speed is I'm, I'm helping people because kind of in a nutshell, if we get your marketing for, for business owners, if we get your marketing working, that means you're going to build this business. Mm -hmm. And we just start everyone at this vision, mission, and values phase um, because you better make damn sure you're going to build a business uh, that you actually want. Um, you, you know my story with the, with the supplement business, and that ended up costing me a couple of years and now a multi-million dollar business. But um, the the exits the exit strategy portion of a vision to me feels and seems like almost even further out an anchor point so i wanted to have a conversation with you about when someone is thinking about their exit strategy from a very high level from a vision standpoint um What's your perspective and what's your experience on how important is this exit strategy? What does it do for the business? Just kind of your real value of first just having an exit strategy. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> my view on it is that you really should have an exit strategy for, from day one. Um, so when you're starting your business, like how are you going to get out of it? Um, and and I, I say that from like my personal experience, but also working with you know, the hundreds of clients of clients of businesses we've sold is that really you don't know what's going to happen in the business. Um, so if you, if you begin with the end in mind and you think about like, what is my exit look like and how do I get out of this? If it one doesn't work out two it, it grows faster than I thought, or most importantly, what I see with entrepreneurs and, and small to mid-sized business owners is it's actually not a business impetus to sell or exit. It's a personal situation. So it's, you know, burnout stress is probably like our number one and two, um, you know, retirement dreams, a spouse gets relocated or there's another opportunity. There's another business opportunity that pops or, or in up. my case, you have a child, right? Yeah. You have and a child. Like it's all personal stuff. So like, if we look back over the course of hundreds of deals that we've done, like almost, I'd say probably 95 to 98% of those deals the owners decide to exit for a personal reason, not because of finances, not because it fit into the exit plan, right? So really thinking about what those exit options are for your business. Um, and one thing I do talk to, to business owners about is like, you should have options for your exit strategy because like the plan that we design for ourselves, and we know this as business owners, the plan doesn't always work, right? And, and marketing, yeah. Russell, right? I'm, I'm sure, and I, I know yeah, you rarely. like you have variable <laughs> plans of A, B, C, and, and it's the same thing with exits. Um, so there's really like four main exit options for your business. Well, um, and yeah. Before we get into those, it's, it's really, it just popped to me. It's, it's almost like, it's like insurance, right? Like you kind of, it's one of those things that's not really fun to talk about unless mm -hmm. you're, you know, thinking of the exit where you get to sell for tens and hundreds of millions of dollars and go start other great things. But um, it is one of those things where, like you said, having the options is what gives you the power. If you, there's nothing worse than having to sell under pressure or in an emergency where you have no options and you basically have no choices. Yes. And, and that's where a lot of, of, a lot of business owners end up. And, and that's actually why most businesses in America never sell. So 87% of businesses never sell. They go out of business instead. So it's only like 13%, right? And, and the number one reason oh, for crazy. that is it's rush, right? And it's, 
it's, it's not lack of planning. It's lack of just foresight. Um, and it's that personal thing. Things happen in our lives. Yeah. You were going to talk about the four things. What are, yeah, what are those so, four things? So there's like four exit options that you can have in mind. Um, so the first one is that you can just milk your, your business for all the cash and you can plan to close it down. And for some business owners and some businesses, that's the best plan. Like if you know that, um, you're on a trend and it's going to be a short lived trend and you're just going to take all the profit and cash you can and ride it. Like I've, I've one friend, um, that owns a business and it's in a technology that's been on a slow downward spiral for a number of years. And he's just taking all the cash from it. He's like, I know that this technology is going to be obsolete in five years. No one's going to buy it. So I'm just going to increase my profit margins and take all the cash. Right. Yeah. And that's totally fine. So that's one option. Um, the second option is that you could sell it to a third party. So a third party could be a strategic buyer, like another business similar to yours. Um, it could be private equity or an investment buyer, or it could be an individual buyer. Um, we call them corporate buyers. So they're mm -hmm. usually people leaving corporate and chasing their dream of owning a business. Um, they actually are about 80% of the people who buy businesses. So when I talk to a lot of small business owners, they're like, oh, I'm going to sell to private equity or a strategic. Actually, most likely you're probably going to sell to a corporate buyer or an individual. Um, or so that's, or about, that's basically another business, right? Um, it's actually somebody that would is buying your business instead of starting their own business. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. They're newly developed entrepreneurs, we'll call them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, the third is you can transition it to your family. We see this less and less, um, but with the older generations, the baby boomers, even before them, um, you know, the great generation that was legacy was super important. So you could transition your business to a family member, a friend, or maybe even like a business partner that's already existing in the business. And then the last option is you can sell it to your employee or key employees. And there's a variety of vehicles you can do that through. Um, but those are really the four is, you know, you shut it down you sell it to a third party, you transition it to somebody, you know, already like a family member or a friend, or you sell it to your employees. So what's interesting is also, you know, part of, part of what I teach is, um, you know, you got to know your buyer, you know, the marketing is just showing the right message to the right person at the right time and place. Well, here in this exit strategy context, knowing your buyer, is crucial to creating your exit strategy, I would imagine, right? Yes. Like yep. the different scenarios, like you said, if you're gonna go down the path of the legacy path where your children wanna take over the business or another family member, that's a completely different exit strategy than say the corporate uh, seasoned entrepreneur buyer. Yeah, definitely different strategies. And there's ways that you can you know, formulate your business to really target a buyer that you're looking for. Um, and that, that you can do really more leading up to a sale. I think there's some common denominators of all the buyers that they're all looking for. They would all need support in, um, that from the, the beginning when you're, you know, when you're say founding your company or two, five, 10 years away from what you think your exit is, there's some simple things you can do in the business to make it more desirable for any of those four situations. But as you get closer, yeah, knowing your buyer will increase your multiple, it will increase your valuation. Well, and, and taking it one step beyond knowing your buyer, that's a great segue because I wanted to talk to you about this idea of value drivers in a business sale. Yep. Not the value drivers for, your, for a business owner's customers, but in a sales scenario, um, what are those things that um, you know, are going to get you the higher multiple or get you that magic. I, I, I love the idea of multiples, but I love the, also the idea of that special something, you know, like why did Amazon pay a billion dollars for Zappos? You know, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't that Zappos had any shoes that Amazon couldn't get, or they didn't have technology that Amazon couldn't get. It was, some special something. And so I love that idea of that special something, but what's your, your experience around this idea of value drivers? Yeah. So when we talk about value drivers, I kind of split them into two categories. And the first is risk removal. 
So mm -hmm. the first thing buyers are going to want to remove is risk. So buyers have two big fears, and this doesn't matter who's buying the business. It could be your son or private equity firm. Their two big fears are that the customers are going to go away and the employees are going to go away after the owner or founder exits. So if, if we think about that, we're removing risk by putting people in place, processes in place, and systems in place to ensure that the business continues to run post exit of the owner. And that's kind of like your baseline, right? That's where, you know, you're going to take your value from what we would call a distressed sale to a profitable sale, right? Mm -hmm. And then kind of Russell, what you're talking about is that special something, right? So how do I get, and we always, when we're doing valuations, we give people a range of multiples and they'll say like, how do I move from a two to a seven? And th that's the special sauce stuff. Um, we call it qualitative earnings. So it's still based on your cash flow and your profit, but it's, you know, what have you done in the business to separate or differentiate yourself that it would cost a buyer more to replicate that than to just acquire you. And that's when you start to, to move those. So some of the things we've seen is um, marketing and lead generation, right? If you can create, and I know you guys are talking about that, but like, that's what I, yeah. we do, right? Like yeah. that's the whole point of this is, is having that built-in marketing SOPs. Yeah. So creating a consistent lead funnel that's not relying on a person, right? So that's very hard for a lot of businesses to do. So your, your group is already a step ahead in that. Um, reputation can play into that technology and innovation, uh -huh. um, culture. So you mentioned Zappos, right? Um, Zappos was mainly acquired because of the culture they had built and that stickiness factor of yeah. those lead members. Um, and that's very hard, but those what about are relationships. Those like, if you have, um, certain relationships, I, we, we were talking with another business owner, a client of mine, and he has, he's an Amazon listing specialist mm -hmm. and he has these special relationships with Amazon that just about nobody has, you know, like he's got his own customer service team. And so when, when we were talking to different brokers on his exit, um, it was all around, oh my God, you have these relationships that that's a huge value driver that he didn't even realize he had. Yeah. It can be as long as they can be transferred to new ownership. Uh -huh. So the, the big thing, that's the key, that's the key because if they have to go, um, through a whole new interview process. So, um, an example, my first business, um, you know, this Russell was in luxury wine sales yeah. and unknown to a lot of people, wine, luxury wines, like art, right? So to sell some of the highest, um, priced wines, like DRC and hundred acre and things like that, you have to go like interview with the owners to get that right. Um, and that's not transferable. They're doing business because they like me and my husband, Al. Uh. So, um, you know, there's, there's ways we can structure deals with earnouts and seller financing to try and value that and then protect the buyer risk on the backside. But if you have these special relationships or long-term contracts, like we work with a lot of um, clients in the construction industry that have government contracts that are really valuable, but they have to be able to be transferred to a new owner without the new owner having to go back and pitch the federal government or the state of Colorado to get the same contract again. Good points. So it's kind of, you almost want to, as I'm sitting down to write my exit strategy or include this in my vision, I almost need to do an, uh, a, a real inventory of not just my business, but the relationships, the suppliers, the vendors, how much does like your contracts and legal play a part of it? It pays a big part of it. So there's something, actually, that's one of the big suggestions we make to every client. There's something in your legal contracts, every legal contract you sell or you sign will have something called an assignment clause. And this could be related to customers, employees, things like that. Uh -huh. Look, if you're negotiating with Amazon or the federal government, they're probably not going to put an assignment clause in there that allows the contract to be assigned to a new owner. But for your employee contracts, some of your other long-term contracts or relationships, things like that, you can put that into legal agreements. But the bigger thing is too, is how do you transition that relationship 
Now, yeah. when you're first starting out, it's probably you and the partner, right? But right. how do you transition that to be another team member that's yeah. going to stay on post transaction and not you who would be leaving? And and that's, I mean, really, all I want to do is kind of just plant these ideas so that as you're moving forward, it's not something you need to you know, spend a tremendous amount of time on. But if you get the opportunity, document, you know, how these relationships came about, what, what's the goal behind them? What do they want? Things like that. So, mm -hmm. all right. So if I'm sitting down and um, I'm, I'm doing my forward looking vision and my anchor with this is my exit strategy, right? Um, what do you, what would you say is, um, and I'm not, I mean, your expertise and and what Exit Factor is all about is teaching a business owner how to do, you know, the the step by step of a real exit strategy. What I want to do at this point is just say, hey, if I'm thinking about exiting the business, and if I had to put, say, like the one page exit strategy, what are what are like the top two or three really big things that I need to to think about and get down on paper? as part of my company or business vision. Yeah, it, and it's great. And I think it is super important because like I said, things happen, but we always, we have to be shooting for a target as entrepreneurs, yes, right? Indeed. So uh, the first thing I jot down would be my ideal situation. So if say, let's use an example of, I want to sell to a strategic buyer. So my ideal situation is that I'm going to exit to a strategic buyer, some type of time frame. you know, maybe it's 10 years. And I would love to get, and I, I'm a big fan of net proceed number, right? So instead of saying like, I want to sell for $30 million, like I want to walk away with 5 wow. million in cash. <laughs> I love that. Cause I, in, in everything I teach too, I focus on profits, like revenue means nothing. Yep. And, and there's things like, you know, I, I think in our business and even in, um, as entrepreneurs, we hear about all these big exits, Right. But, um, and some, some things we teach in the course is how these exits are actually structured and somebody can sell for $30 million and only walk away with actual 1 million in cash. Like that yeah. does happen with, which earnings. also brings up the point, like probably tax planning is a big factor in, in exit strategy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God you're out there with this. Yeah. A lot of so <laughs> yeah, I'd say ideal exit, like who, who are you selling to and what does the exit look like of those four options? What's the time frame and what's the net proceeds? Um, and then on, on the bottom of that sheet, I'd say, here are my emergency options, right? Uh -huh. What, what are my emergency options? If something happened, what's my option B, right? Um, so would that be to sell to the key employees or would it be to maybe sell to that larger corporate buyer pool who tend to pay less than a strategic buyer, but there's more of them. Um, and, and then, I mean, that's like what, four simple lines that you, you track and you keep your metrics as you're getting closer, you can get evaluation done on your business. So you can see like, Hey, this is where I'm starting from. And it'll also give you an idea of like, where does my profit need to get to in order to get that? net proceed number. Yeah. It gives you the goalposts, right? Yep. Like I, I let you, I always tell my kids, you can't, you can't hit a bullseye if you don't even have a target. So, right. So, okay. Um, well it's to me, it's, I, I think I, I want to touch a little bit on timing too, because again, and I think if, if, and let's let's take those entrepreneur businesses where they're like, yeah, I'm I'm shooting for you know the high exit. It's not the family legacy thing. It's I want to I want to sell this thing and make money. I'm building a business to sell, right? Um, because that you know the the growth mindset is usually the people who are going to be in here. Um, so when I'm doing that, um, and I have that in mind having that intention put out there, how do I want to ask this question? It's, um, there's how I know, I know in your teachings, in your course, you have five steps, mm -hmm. but are, would you also say that those cover the, how many elements go into a, a valuable growth, big money exit strategy? Like, is, you know, if we're talking legal, financial, marketing, risk, blah, 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 blah. Is it, is that what your course covers those five steps? And those yep. are the big five you could say, 
or is it you have more of a process and there's more than five steps in there? Yeah, there's a the the, the Does that make any sense? Steps, yeah, that <laughs> totally makes sense. Yeah, the five steps is the process, right? Because when yeah. you're getting ready for exit, it does take time to get ready. Right. And then it takes time to sell. So those are the five steps of the process. There's about um, 13 value drivers that we've identified okay. that cause a buyer to pay more or less or not buy at all. And we cover those um, in our in our consulting courses. That's what I was trying to come up with was how many value drivers are there? <laughs> and, and like, look, they're, those are changing. I mean, yeah. um, why we built this course is because we're talking to business buyers every day. We have about 50,000 active buyers right now. And they change. Um, sometimes, like I'd say, probably five years ago, we didn't hear as much about recurring revenue. And now I can't talk to a buyer without recurring revenue getting brought up. That's the um, subscription, kind of any sort of recurring or? It could be subscription. SaaS. It could be long-term repeatable contracts, right? So we oh, do- sure. Yeah, we do a lot of work in um, blue collar industries and they're not going to sell memberships or whatever, but, you know, having things like government contracts that we talked about or yeah, people referral partners. Yeah. But so those buyer and those value drivers, they, they change over time. Um, but in general, like these 13 have been pretty stable for the last couple of decades. It's a little overwhelming to think of. <laughs> yeah. It which is. is why, which is why I wanted to have you in particular here, because um, you know, for the people that are in the marketing plan formula, they're they're you know people who enjoy self education, and and I wanted to have you here because you developed this this program called Exit Factor. So in the last you know five six minutes here, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've done, um, how it works for your for our, our clients, um, and a little bit about, you know, what someone can expect and, and, you know, the time frame, all that good stuff that I know you, you've already put into place. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So we created exit factor to help educate, um, entrepreneurs on how to both buy and sell companies. Um, and it was developed out of our business brokerage and M&A practice. Our, our main, um, offering is a course called prep to sell. So what it is, it's an online course that's also um, delivered over about a year time frame. So we focus on a different topic every month. We also have monthly accountability groups. So all of our account, uh, like um, all of our clients are broken up into small groups, like five business owners each that are in similar stages in the process. Mm -hmm. Never the same industry, uh, but similar stages. And we have these five account, or we have these five people doing monthly accountability calls with a coach like myself or someone else on our team. Um, we also, you know, what we we're a big fan of the goalposts too, right? So in the program, we do business valuations at the beginning and then towards the end too, to kind of track. So we you can, you can visibly measure like my business is worth here today. Yeah. I invest in exit factor. And now my business is worth this. Yeah. It's on pretty average, easy proposition to invest in, right? Yeah. On average, our clients have increased their business valuation by 40% um, over the year of that course. All right. What's the average sale you would say in your brokerage? Right now, our average sale is about 1.5 million in transactions. So 40% right? of a million, that's about 400,000 in value. Yeah. Makes a pretty easy decision. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 you know, and, and really this wasn't for me, it's not about, you know, making a ton of money or, you know, change, it's about like really changing entrepreneurship. Like I said, only 13% of businesses sell. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I strongly believe that if we are able to educate people on how this process works and why buyers buy and why buyers pay, we can move that 13%. And we can get businesses sold and businesses sold for more money, which I know is impactful to all of our personal lives as entrepreneurs. Oh, yeah. It gives you, you know, money is fuel for life. And so it, you give, you get, I don't know a single entrepreneur that's able to get paid and then just go retire on the beach. Like within a month, they're out putting that money to work and creating more value in the world. So that's the beauty of it, right? Right, right. So. Cool. So it's it's pretty similar to what what we have here with the marketing plan formula. Um, you talked and and this prep to sell is for obviously sellers. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Do you have the buyer component? Yep. Yeah. So we have a course um, called Business Buying 101, whereas we recommend everybody starts there. But that's if you're thinking about growing through acquisition, um, that's a course. It's about six months. Um, it's a live course. So we do monthly live coaching calls because the market changes very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and we just teach people like this is how you find deals. This is how you win deals. And this is how you pay for deals um, and how it's going to impact your business. Because I've, I've grown my business through acquisition. Um, you know, we obviously help clients do it all the time and it is a really powerful tool, especially like we just talked about value drivers. And then we talked about like the, the fact that 87% of businesses don't sell. There's some pretty good deals out there sometimes Oh yeah. to acquire struggling businesses or businesses that are undervalued or somebody that just has a really cool technology. They're not deploying correctly. Um, so it's pretty even easy. customer lists, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I love that too. I, that's a whole nother conversation we can have, but, yeah. um, all right. So let's, let's kind of wrap this up first. Thank you for taking your time. We're kind of coming up on the 30 minute mark, which is where I wanted to hit. Um, let's, let's spend the last two minutes because I see, and this is a, you know, kind of moving forward the, uh, the, the person watching this is going to be their their focus is right now on creating this marketing plan. And when when I say marketing plan, I kind of see it as like, you know, like like a binder with SOPs. And I want to get it to that point where most people today marketing is this black hole of just expenses. And and so if a company were to have this done, how do you like you're you're representing a, a business um, and they have a written marketing plan that not only has this crystal clear vision of where they want to go, um, but it shows who's their most profitable customer, what is that, what is all their copy, their marketing, their unique selling propositions, all that good stuff. What are the top strategies to go get it? How are the strategies implemented and measured? And then, um, you know, on the back end, they almost have like a dashboard too. What do you think that would do to the value of a business in a transaction? I think it would easily at least move the multiple, um, a full turn, which is a one time. So like, instead of, let's say an example, you're getting three times EBITDA, it would move it to like a four times. Yeah. So it could be, I mean, like we said, if we're, we're looking at our average transaction value of 1.4 million, like let's say their EBITDA was 400,000, a full turn would get them another $400,000. Yeah. Just for I want to, I want to have a value proposition like you do, right? Like yeah. invest in this and you're going to get, you know, 50 times on your money kind of a thing. Like it's, it has to be that valuable. And I, I see both of what we do as there's not many, when you're talking about building a business and selling a business and the value drivers within the business, there's not many bolt on value drivers. Like you can't just go bolt. I mean, I, you could go buy a business that has some special sauce technology or something, but at the end of the day, there's not many bolt on value drivers. And, and I think having a good exit strategy and having a good marketing plan are probably the two most valuable bolt on things when you when you're thinking about selling a business, right? Yeah. And, and like, think of it this way too, Russell is like about valuation. It's all about maximizing your profit and what you guys are doing and creating in this, this, this plan and this SOP is you're figuring out a way to not waste money by throwing right. stuff against the wall and hoping it sticks. And so like all those dollars that aren't, aren't working drop to the bottom line. Cause you're only investing in marketing things, you know, are going to work. There's your EBITDA going, right? Yeah. So then your EBITDA goes up and then your multiple goes up. So you, you get a multiplying factor on that. And your risk mitigation, you know, a new business a buyer's going to see this and come in and go, Holy crap. Like I don't have to worry where my next customer is coming from. Yeah. Cool. Thanks yeah. for the plug. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to, I do, we're right. We have 10 seconds left. Um, yep. I know, do you have, so everyone watching this, if they're interested in the exit factor, um, yes. we're going to, you, you're going to provide me with the information. So below this interview, we're going to have a whole detailed description and page. Um, but is there any like, um, oh, there's my timer. <laughs> is there, uh, is there any uh, like, 
final words you want to say, uh, you know, put it out there. I, of course, I encourage everyone to reach out and connect with you. So yeah. Yeah. If anybody has questions, they can reach out and connect with me and Jessica at exitfactor.com. But I find that prep to sell is good, whether you're selling now, whether you think about you're selling in the future or whether you never want to sell, um, and like in case some of those happen, but also for everybody in your program, Russell, we are going to do free business valuations included with their prep to sell membership. Wow. So I will throw that into the info. Wow. That alone, I think is a couple thousand bucks, right? Yeah. So generally about $2,500 to get a business valuation done. Nice. And there's your, your benchmark, right? Yep. That's your benchmark. Get it, get it today. Get your valuation today. And then, right. We can see where we can go. So combined we're, uh, this last half hour probably added many hundreds of thousands of dollars to your bottom line. All right. Thanks for your time, Jessica. Thank you. Super appreciate it. And, um, Again, there's a forum below here. So if you have any questions for Jessica, ask them below uh, in like the comment section and we'll be sure to continue the conversation.